Right? So let me write that down, and I, let me express that function in a couple different ways. Uh, that'll be a way to introduce all the terms you are supposed to know about a traveling periodic wave. So, um, so the mathematical description of a wave, mathematical description of wave, um, we can describe something that looks like this. Function f as a function of position and time is equal to um, amplitude, let me use my standard symbol, amplitude times the functional form, sine, and the argument to this has this constant k times x minus vt. That's actually not the most common way we write it. I mean, this is correct, nothing's wrong about this, but there's um, the more common way we write it. So let me rewrite it in that way, and um, that'll be a way to reintroduce a term that you already know, kinda. Um, so I can write it this way. I can expand this out. Then it'll be a times sine of kx, and then k minus kvt minus k times v times t. Um, and I guess I want you to have some kind of an intuitive guess for what this coefficient should be. It's something that you have already seen. Anybody recognize it? It's a, a little bit far removed, so it might not be as easy to remember it. So this is the picture that I like to imagine when I'm trying to think about it. So, so far we've been trying to describe the function, the wave, as a function of position, right? You know, whenever I needed to draw something, I stopped the time, make, so I've been taking snapshot. The snapshot description is one way to describe wave. Another way to describe wave is you fix the position. So instead of saying, I'm going to, um, I'm going to look at all the different positions of wave at a single moment in time. I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to look at a single position of the wave, single x value, and look at that over, a different, uh, over different values of time t. So let me let the time go. Then this is what I'm trying to describe here. So I, fixated on this green bead um, that's moving up and down. That's a single position x that I'm looking at. You could say that this is where I said x equals zero. And if I'm describing the y position of the speed, what do you think that would look like? So, you know, y at x equals zero, but as a function of time. Uh, roughly speaking, what do you think that should look like? Is that something you have seen before? You have never seen motion like this before? Spring. Yeah, mass on the spring, oscillation, right? That's kind of why we do oscillation before waves. Because um, you can actually get to oscillation from wave. So all that oscillation is, you take the wave and you fix the point. So you only look at it as a function of time, that's oscillation. So in a very rough way, um, I'm ignoring some details, you could say this, is some amplitude of the oscillation times the trigonometric function, sine or cosine, sine of, and when we are describing oscillation, there was angular frequency or the natural frequency omega times t. So this is what I want you to remember, that uh, when we are describing something with a very definite period, some kind of regularity, we have a picture of oscillation, so when you come back to this, you know, when we say x is equal to zero, this is the, when we say x is equal to zero, this is the term that remains. And this should be equal to omega times t. It should be equal to omega times t. So what that means is that this should be equal to omega, angular frequency. So let me uh, write that term here. Um, 
angular frequency. So we can talk about angular frequency over wave, over periodic wave. And this will be related to at least the two more quantities that you have seen. And this is a matter of remembering the definitions and you know, not forgetting them. Angular frequency is related to plane frequency. And what else is angular frequency and frequency related to? Time. time? What kind of time? <laughs> Describe the time for me. What time are you measuring? Time for one full cycle, right? So here I'll be measuring something like, okay, start, time, end. That's what you would be measuring, right? So we call that period. So the angular frequency and frequency will be related to period. So um, recognizing, I'll just use capital P, recognizing all these relationships is important because a given problem may give you information for these in terms of only one of them. And my expectation is that you can work out the remaining from remembering relationship between these that I will write down soon.